Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at fave icons or favicons. If you don't know what it is, today I'm going to show you how to use it properly. And if you are using one, does it look good on every platform? Well, today we're going to be using a website that I've used in the past on client work as well as on my own personal website. It's called realfavicongenerator.net. This isn't a sponsored video. It's just something I like to use and I figured I would share it with you guys today. So the link to the website is down in the description and let's head over there and get started. So what you'll need for this is your icon that you're gonna be using on your website, whether that's a text or an image icon, it doesn't really matter. The sizing on that is 260 pixels by 260 pixels is what they recommend for the best quality. So I have a black icon and then also a white icon of my logo. Now, if I was gonna use a color one, I would have that in here as well. So you wanna make sure you have black, white, and color just so everything looks good. So you wanna have all those prepared ahead of time. Let's head over to Safari. And this is what the website looks Looks like it gives you a little information and you can also check your icon so if I go to my website and then I check my favicon it'll show you what I have so when you bookmark this on your home screen of your phone or your tablet for iOS it looks like this it shows you what Android looks like and we have the windows so this is what it looks like in Safari as well as in most browsers like Google Chrome what I normally use it'll show up next to the website name so that is what I am using on my website so let's go ahead and head backwards and we'll get started setting your guys up so just select your fave icon and here it shows the dimensions it needs to at least be 70 by 70 and as I said before for best results 260 by 260 so we'll just select that so here in my fave icon folder, I have my two images. This is just my recording session, just ignore that. And I'm first gonna select the black one. That's the one I want to be on everything. So if you have a color one, I would select that one first and select choose. It's gonna generate the icon and then it's gonna give you a bunch of things to go through to make sure everything looks good. Now, depending on your branding, this is going to be up to you what colors you use and how you style this. But you'll see it gives you everything you can do. So basically what this is doing is making a bunch of images for these specific platforms and then you're gonna to link to these in your code later on. So we'll start with the iOS. For this one, obviously this looks horrible, so I'm gonna click add a solid plain background and white looks good for mine. You can also adjust the margin size. I actually had a little bit of margin size in mine already, uh, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more because I don't want that icon to be too large. Uh, you want it to kind of match the rest of these icons, so look at their spacing and just for best results, that's what I like to go with. So I'm gonna go with seven pixels on mine. So that's done and now we can go down to the Chrome. For Android, I personally don't like the black. I think it just kind of blends in with whatever the background they have. So what I do is I'm gonna go to dedicated picture and I'm just gonna pick another one. Now I'll select my white one and hit choose. And then this will give me another option so I can either use the master picture or I can have a new one just for this platform, which is what I'm gonna select. So now you'll see we have the white icon over here. Then I'm gonna go back to the main settings and I'm also gonna apply a slight drop shadow just to make this stand out a little bit better and it just looks overall nicer. So now we want to name this. We don't wanna leave that out because it just looks weird with all the other ones named. So I'm just gonna put my name since it's my website. And then you can also choose to change the theme color. I'm just gonna leave mine where it is. So that's it for that one. Up next is Windows Metro. This looks kind of cool, but let's say I don't want that. First off, I'm just gonna choose blue, or you can put in a custom color code, but I'm just gonna leave it as the default blue they give us. And then we can also choose a white silhouetted version of the icon. So this one, we don't actually have to choose a new dedicated picture. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna select this, and it will change my icon to white, and it looks good. Moving on to the Mac OS. All right, for this one, we have a default silhouette of the original. I personally think that's okay. Or you can choose a theme color. So for this, this will be like the touch bar and then the, also the color version of the focused pin tab. I'm just gonna choose black for this one to match mine. It's not exact, but it works good. And I'm also gonna lighten it up a little bit because you'll see it blends in with the touch bar. So I'm just gonna go until I find a color that I like. That is also changing this, but that's okay. I like that, so I'm good with that. So this is all based on your personal preference and your custom branding. So you wanna make sure all this is consistent with you and make sure everything looks good to your standards. So now that we've done all of those, we are now ready to generate this. And I'm just gonna place these in the main root folder of my website. 
So I'll just place that there. If you want, you can do a custom path. So if you want to create a folder on your website that is called favicon, you can just link that here by saying slash whatever to put it in there. So I'm just gonna place these in the root folder and then I'll just select generate favicons. So once that generates, it gives you the steps to follow to make sure this is linked properly on your website. First off, you wanna download the fav icon package. The fav icon package is just gonna have all the images that they generated for you. So you wanna download that, you want to extract it, and then drag that into the root folder of your server. Next, you want to link this in the index. So I'm just gonna quickly grab this, and I'm gonna copy this and go to my VS Code. And here in the head tag, I'm just gonna paste that in, I'm gonna save this and then upload this to my server to update the version of my index. Once you've done that, I recommend you check your fav icon, give it some time and then check it and make sure everything works good so that when you go to your website, you'll have a nice fav icon like mine right here. So if I click that, it takes me to my website and everything looks nice. If you guys have never used this before, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more design and code related content. Make sure you guys turn that notification bell on so you don't miss an upload when it goes live. All my social media is linked down in the description. It's at Kaler Edwards if you guys want to follow me on other places. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.